Amen. Hey, awesome. It is absolutely fantastic to see you here this morning. If it's your first time or if you haven't been in a, in a while, we just want to say we're honored that you chose to worship with us here at the Lord's Table. My name is Ken, and uh, I just am here this morning to introduce to you a dear, dear, I, he's not a guest because he's part of the Lord's Table, right? Uh, but a dear friend of mine. Um, it is important that we understand um, that God has us knit together like a beautiful tapestry, right? That God gives us amazing people uh, that look different, sound different, do different, all that, but we're all tied together because we serve the Lord. Amen? And so I don't want to take one second longer than I have to. Um, I want to introduce to you uh, not just the man that's speaking, but he and his lovely wife, Miss Joan. Uh, would you stand to your feet? Would you give Peter and Joan just a big... Goldsboro, welcome. Let them feel some love from you as they come to share this morning. Where do we begin? What a privilege. Thank you for your prayers, your love, and and your support. Um, we just got back from 33,000 miles of traveling. And if I begin to tell you what's happening around these countries, I, I said before, I wish I could take you with us just for two, three days and just see what God is doing in this 1040 window that doesn't know God. You know, uh, this week, we passed the 8 billion mark on this planet. 8 billion. And they tell us that all the Christians, that's from the Charismatics to the Catholics, let's assume they all Christians amount to 2.5 billion. That means 5.5 billion people don't know Jesus. <laughs> And we go to countries where they've never even heard the name of Jesus. Never heard of it. But you sent us there. And we keep going. And we're going to keep going. We'll be back in a few months. And we so look forward to it. To see children hide in caves because their own country is bombing them. In, in, in Myanmar, now it used to be Burma, every Christian school has been bombed and destroyed. The children learn in caves that they've dug into the into the mountain. They, 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 they live off the land for food. And thank God, there are men and women here who give every month. I want to thank you for that. So we can feed them. We send tons of rice into Burma to feed these children. Not just rice, but oil and Anything we can give for protein, fish and lentils. So God is moving. Just recently, your church, your children, your young children gave $600 so their children. Yes, amen. And just before that, they gave $1,200 to provide fresh water for children who were drinking out of puddles and drinking out of water so bad. So we thank you that we can go for you. We're so grateful. This year, we'll serve close to 500 children. And we decided we don't have money for gifts, so we're just going to give them food to take to their villages. The food and the gospel. Each child will get a gospel book that we were able to purchase. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless the Lord's table. I want you to do one more thing. We've got about six people here that are just very, very special friends. Bill and Debbie, where are you sitting? I can't see you. Bill and Debbie, stand up, stand up. And Tom and, and, and Megan and Thomas. And where are you, Michaela? Stand up, stand, stand quickly. I can't see them. Where are they? Oh, there they are. Would you give these folks a big welcome? This lady was the nurse who helped nurse me back to health. 
And then she baked us fresh bread. Can you believe that this past week I ate apple pie for the first time in years? We don't get that overseas, so thank you. And folks, if you want the biggest steak in town, go make friends with that big guy standing up there, Bill. He will serve you a steak that'll, I tell you what. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But thank you all for all you've done. Would you do one more thing? Would you all stand with me? And I want you to pray for a dear friend, Mary Barber, who's going into hospital today, probably for a 40-second surgery. And this lady's in her 80s and just needs a touch from God. So would you raise your hand and just pray right now that God would send his healing angels. Oh God, in Jesus' precious name, we pray for Mary and Jay. They, they've been so gracious. They're a home away from home. And they care for us, but we care for them. And we pray right now, be with them. Cover them with your precious blood. Bring healing to a body in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I, I received a, um, a, a letter in the mail, and I knew it was from the medical facilities, just from the envelope. And I um, was a little bit confused, but I opened it, and there was this bill, I want you to imagine this, for $75,000 for hip replacement. And I went, that, that's not me. I mean, I had some surgery, but... You know, my hip's still okay, and I'm going, what's going on? And then I looked at the name and the address, and they'd sent it to the wrong address. And I just had that sigh of relief. But it reminded me of just the other day I was talking to a child of God. And they said, Pastor Peter, i got to ask you a question. Why, why is God doing this to me? Why is God bringing me these troubles and these problems and and, and, and why is everything going wrong in my life? And I said, uh, I think you're sending it to the wrong address. I said, what do you mean? I said, listen what God says. Listen what Jesus says. Jesus says, I think we've got it up there on the screen in a second. Jesus says, the thief, the thief cometh but to kill and to steal and destroy. I said, it's not God doing this. It's the thief. It's the enemy. Jesus didn't send that. I had a young man tell me just the other day, and he said, I don't know why God keeps reminding me of all my sin, of all my mistakes and all my faults. And I, I beg him to forgive me. And I said, no, you're sending it to the wrong address. God said, as far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions from you. They're gone forever. And he said, but I'm guilty. I said, of course you are. You're guilty but forgiven. Oh, thank God for that. Guilty but forgiven. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. You know what Jesus did say? I love this. Jesus said, I came that you might have life. I wonder how many here today are glad that Jesus came into your life. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Oh, he came. Wretched sinner, lost in sin, disillusioned, distressed. Because you know why? The enemy... I destroyed my dreams, destroyed my hopes, destroyed my power, destroyed my ability to even reason. I look around us and I see how the enemy destroys families and marriages and homes and children. How many people here today have children that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ? I know I have a son. Anybody else? Yeah, we pray for you every day. Why? The enemy wants to destroy them. You see, he's come to steal and to kill and destroy. Destroy your life, destroy your hope, destroy your future. 
But Jesus said, I came. I came. You know, it's wonderful to have joy. And it's wonderful to have moments of joy. And moments of peace. And, and, and moments of victory even. And moments of power. But Jesus said, I've come. And you'll see it up here in a moment. That you might have life. A life of joy, a life of peace, a life of hope, a life of victory, a life of power. That's what he wants for you. He wants you to have a life. But you know what's amazing about life? Life is so powerful. I, I, I don't know about you, but when, when, when I got married, I, I, I didn't want children. I, you know, children are a lot of work. Children are hard work. <laughs> I'm going, no, no, I don't. But you know what? I, I looked at this beautiful woman. I'm going, mm, I sure love her. And next minute, you, we got kids, you know? I, it, it wasn't supposed to be that way, but that's what happened. But that's what life does. It gives you the ability to create life. And that's what Jesus wants you to do. He wants you not just to create life, but to change the environment where you live. Jesus said, I've come to redeem you. I've come to seek and to save the lost. That was his greatest mission. And he says, I want you to have that mission in your heart. I want you to seek and to save that which is lost. I want you to redeem these people who are lost. But then he goes beyond that. He says, I don't just want you to have life. I want you to have it more abundantly. And I didn't know how to illustrate that, but so, so here, here goes. better. No, that's good. But Jesus says, I want it to overflow. Oh, yeah. Oh, just overflow. Overflow. Why? Because where that soil is around you, See, that's why I married her. <laughs> and a few other things. Like when you get well and the doctor says you can have a shower. He said, but you can't use your arms. And I said, oh, I got another set of arms going to help me. <laughs> but that passed and I'm, I'm getting better now. <laughs> Where that overflows new life is going to grow. You see, God wants you to be overflowing to change people's lives, to change your environment. Oh, church, hear me today. God wants you full of power. God wants you full of his anointing. He wants you full of his presence. Why? Because he's got a purpose for you. He's got a role for you. Oh, you know where I'm heading. <laughs> you know, when, when Jesus said, I'm going to my Father. But this great commission. And, and by the way, somebody said it so beautifully. The great commission is not a great suggestion. <laughs> Hello? Anybody there? Hallelujah. <laughs> it's not a great suggestion. It's the heart and soul of our living God. It's the heart and soul of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, I'm going to give you power to do what? To be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. We, we grew up, and I never did 
figure if I was on the right side of the track or the wrong side of the track. We had a railway track about 30 feet in front of our yard. And the trains would come by. There was a little pathway just over here. And, and that train would come by all day. And, and switching, taking cars, moving them, bringing them back. And every time he got outside, I yelled, toot toot. You start to say grace, toot toot. You'd have a come, toot toot. Just drove you crazy. It was nonstop because they were going nice all day. Toot toot. He was this powerful locomotive with all this power outside my house going toot toot. And it reminds me sometimes of us Christians. We're so excited. Oh my goodness, I'm a new creation. Yes, woo! Toot toot. But take that locomotive and send it down with the destination, with the purpose, taking its cargo. And you hear it in the wind. What a beautiful sound. Let me tell you something. When you and I take God's power and stop celebrating with it just for ourselves to feel good. And that's okay for two minutes. But find your purpose. Find your destination. Take that load that you got. Take that power that you got. And use it to the glory of God. In 2 Corinthians, we love that. Jesus said, oh, you're all a new creation, right? How many of you know that verse? You're all a new creation. Yeah, we all know that. You know what the next verse is? Verse 20. Oh, um, it's so you'll be my ambassadors. <laughs> and, and oh, by the way. The reason you, his ambassadors, is to reconcile God to man. Here it comes. He wants you to be a disciple. He wants to send you. He wants to send you. He doesn't say, I want you to go around the world. He says, just go around the block. My dear friend Jay, who couldn't be here today, uh, we go walking. I'm supposed to walk so many miles a day. We do. I go walking with him, and I'm, look, where's Jay? Oh, he's, he's there talking to neighbors. I wait for him, keep walking. Where, where'd he go now? Oh, he's talking to this lady just lost her husband. I'm walking, and he's not. He's got a destination. He's got a purpose. He wants to touch his neighbors. Here's Mary going in for a 40-second surgery on oxygen, can barely move to the kitchen. Every Friday morning, go to a house, and you'll see cars everywhere. Why? She's got people coming, and she teaches them how to quilt, and she teaches them about love, and she teaches them about the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, thank you. You don't have to go across the islands and across the rivers and across the mountains. Just go across the street. <laughs> Just go across the street. Just go across the street. They're waiting for you. I think I told you the story, but if I didn't, it's worth repeating. We were doing discipleship training in Dominican Republic, and we were about the third week People were coming back and sharing their experience. And, and a woman raised her hand and she said, can I, can I share what happened? Tears running down her cheeks. And she stood up and she said, I have a neighbor, just a horrible, horrible man. He, he, he's drunk most of the time. He curses us. He just, he just he, he absolutely horrible man. She said, Wednesday night, 
this little voice inside my heart said, you need to go talk to your neighbor. You need to tell him your story and the Jesus story. And she said, God, he's, he's a horrible man. But I'll go. And she went. And she shared her story, the Jesus story. And that man looked at her and he said, thank you. Thank you for coming and gave his life to Christ. Just wait, just wait, just wait. She said, the next morning, he was killed in a car accident. And she said, I said, oh God, what if I hadn't talked to him? What if I hadn't taken the message to Jesus? They're waiting. There's a world out there waiting. You know, Jesus came to a city where there was a crazy man. I mean, just crazy. Most of the time running around naked. I think I see some of them around some of our stores in town. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I went to Walmart the other day and I'm going, this could be in the Bible. You know, <laughs> crazy, out of his mind, attacking people. And Jesus came. That's all it takes, you know. But Jesus has no other hands, no other feet but yours and mine. Okay? And Jesus sets him free. And this man is so grateful. The people in the city hear about it and they come. Now, this is amazing. Here he's sitting, the Bible says, he's clothed in his right mind. And the people were afraid. Now, you go figure that. Huh? Let me tell you something. When you carry the anointing of God, when you carry the power of God in your heart, those people will be afraid of you. They can't figure you out. They're going to go, ah, ah, I'm not sure. And then this man begs Jesus, Lord, please, please, I beg you, let me too follow you. Let me, let me come and follow you. What did Jesus say? No. Can you imagine that? No. You go. And the first missionary was born. The first real disciple was born. Go back to your village and tell them all things that happened to you. How many of us are ready to go back to our village, back to our home, back to school, back to work, and tell them all things that Jesus did? There was a woman at the well. And her life changed. You see, folks, just one meeting with Jesus and lives change. And she goes back to her village. And she says, come, I found the Messiah. I found the one we've been waiting for. I've got the answer. He's here. And the whole village comes out. You know, it's interesting. The disciples say, Lord, why are you talking to her? If you read a little bit further, you'll see why. Jesus says, I want you to look up and see the fields are white unto harvest. And if you and I can just look around, See the loneliness, the hurt, the despair. Go back to the Old Testament in Ezekiel. In the desert. Hear these dry bones. And sometimes we get to feel like we just feel so far from God. We feel dry. We feel empty. We feel lonely. We feel depressed. We feel desperate. And God asks the question. 
Will these bones rise again? <laughs> you know what? God says, Ezekiel, why don't you speak over them? See, God's given us the power to bring life to people, to bring hope, to bring the beautiful message of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the lepers? There was one leper came to Jesus, cried out. And Jesus said, what do you want me to do? He said, oh, Lord, if, if it's your will, I want to be clean. Jesus said, I will be clean. But then Jesus said something. I want you to go back to the temple. Go back to the priest and bring your gift. I want to look in the cameras for a moment and talk to people at home. Thank you that you're watching. And I know many of you are homebound. You, you cannot be here no matter what you try. But I also know there's some of you that could be here. Let me tell you what. If Jesus came in your life and cleansed you, if Jesus came into your life and, and redeemed you, He's saying, it's time to go back. And I'm inviting you at home. Come on back. We need you. You say, what, just for fellowship? It's more than that. See, when we come together, Jesus said to this man, take your gift. Do you realize each of us has a gift? And when we come here, we bring that gift to one another. We need your joy. We need your spirit. We need your power. We need you. To bless us. So come on back. Be here next Sunday. The fellowship is wonderful. You know, I, I said to my wife the other day, because in the next eight to ten years, I guess we're going to have to slow down a little bit. And I said, where are we going to go? And she said, my goodness. We go to the Y to work out. And there, one of the people who works there comes running out and greets us. One of our people. <laughs> I mean, I go to the Y and I'm welcome. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I go to the bank. I go to Walmart and I run into God's people from here. And when we come here on a Sunday like this morning, I'm just so humbled by the love and the, and, and the affection and the caring. We thank you for that. You have a gift. Bring it to God's church. Bring it. I got three questions. Why do we do it? Why? Why should you do it? Number one, to be obedient. It's that simple. Jesus said, Go. Go, go and make disciples. Go and share your story. Go tell them all things that ever happened to you. Go. I've had people say, well, we need to pray about this. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> well, we should have a meeting and decide which way. No, you don't. <laughs> you know what I love about this? That leper, you know what Jesus said about him? He said, I want you to go to the priest. I want to show yourself. Bring your gift as a testimony, as a witness to what Christ done in your life. Oh, church, the world is waiting for us to be obedient to the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no other plan there is no plan B. We are the church. We the living body of Christ. He uses our hands, our eyes, our heart, our feet. He uses you to make a difference in this world. To change people's lives. You know what I love? He says, and I'll never leave you or forsake you. We've been in horrible situations. 
I want you to imagine I'm preaching and a man walks in with a gun in his pocket to kill me. And he comes right to the front. And the lady with him tells me afterwards, you know, you always lay hands on people when you pray for them. And he said, he had told me, when he touches me, I'm going to shoot him dead. But you see, the Holy Spirit knew that. And the Holy Spirit just said, don't touch him. Just command that spirit to leave. You know how exciting that is? <laughs> you know how exciting that is? I went into a house. And there's a guy who walked. He said, you walk in that door. I'm shooting you. He had his gun, shotgun across his lap. I said, why? He said, why? He said, my children got saved, and all I hear about is Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter, Uncle Peter. I said, well, they, they got it wrong. It should be about Uncle Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I'm sick of that too. He said, so turn around and go. I said, no, 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 we've got to talk. I said, tell you what, send the children out. You don't want to shoot me in front of them. That's just not right. And he said, so the kids leave. And he says, look at that. Now the kids even listen to you. And I walked in the house and I sat down. I said, sir, how great is your pain? How badly are you hurting? I'm telling you that to say this. It's exciting when you decide to become a disciple. <laughs> you just don't know what's going to happen next. You just don't know. What a way to live. What a way to live. Number two, how do we do that? See, that's what's wonderful. Where's Bobby? Bobby, stand up quickly. Where are you? Ah, oh, Bobby. See, this man is ready. You're a big guy. You've got to play rugby with me. You know that? This man, every third Sunday, teaches you your story and the Jesus story. Wouldn't it be wonderful, Bobby, if, if the, half the church was there next time? You think you could handle that? He says he can handle that. Thank you, Bobby. Listen. Yes. <laughs> Go and learn how to be a disciple. It's not very complicated. Believe me, it's not. We see people witnessing in restaurants. You know what we do now when we sit down? and the waitress comes or waiter comes and takes our order, we say, excuse me, we're going to say grace in a moment. Is, is there anybody, anything we can pray for for you? Don't you dare pray for me, God! <laughs> Never had that happen. <laughs> now, I know it's going to happen. You're going to try it, and that's going to happen. And you're going to go, you see? Brother Peter was wrong. No, I have never, never. Angel, am I right? We've never had somebody say, don't you dare pray for me. I'll tell you what we have seen. We've seen other people come and say, would you pray for me as well? They're waiting for us, folks. They're waiting. They're waiting. They're waiting. But you know what? Until you go, until Moses stuck his foot in the water, nothing happened. Until Moses struck the rock, nothing happened happened. Until they got in the lion's den, nothing happened. Until they step into the fire, nothing happened. Don't ask for God's presence just to sit there and enjoy it. Not going to happen. I'm telling you now, not going to happen. But you get in the fight. <laughs> You get where somebody's got a gun in their pocket when they shoot you. <laughs> we know what happens then. Jesus shows up. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus came. And he's going to go with you. But you've got to go. You've got to go. You've got to go. And the third thing. What's the purpose? He wants you to be a disciple. He wants you to be an ambassador. He wants you to serve right here in Jerusalem. 
Help me here quickly. How many of the Dream Team are in this building right now? Would you stand to your feet quickly? Stand quickly, quickly, quickly. Quickly, quickly. Let the people see you. Oh, my goodness. They're standing everywhere. Would you give them a big round of applause? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, listen carefully. We need about another 50 volunteers. Our children's church is exploding. Our youth is exploding. Our church is growing. I'm not going to ask for 50 people, but I wonder if there's 25 people sitting here who say, you know what? I'll do it. I'll start here. I'll start serving here. I will be a volunteer. Do I have 25 people here who will say, I'll do it? Would you raise your hand if you say, I'll start being a volunteer? Quickly, let me count your hands. Quickly, quickly, raise your hand. Anybody? Yes, I see that hand. Two, yes. Three, any more? I need 25, folks. Come on, four. Where else? Anybody else? I'll, t I'll take the four. Going for five. Anybody? Who's number five? Oh, thank you. Number five. Thank you. I got people don't even come to church want to volunteer. We need you folks. It's time to step up. Do me a favor. Afterwards, go to Pastor Mitch, Pastor Nick, Pastor Trey, Pastor Ken, and say, here's my name, here's my email, here's my phone. Write me down. And if you haven't risen, rose your hand, please, would you, would you do that today? I want to pray. Two prayers. If there's anybody here that doesn't know Jesus, that's never given their life to Christ, I can never bring a message without giving you an opportunity. Every head bowed, every eye closed as we pray. Is there anybody here that says, I don't know Jesus. I want him to be Lord of my life. I'm going to count to three. When I count to three, raise your hand so we can pray for you. One, two, three. If you're ready to raise your hand, shoot it up right now, three, and say, I want Jesus to come into my life. Anybody here? Anybody? Okay. Now look at me. There's a call that's gone out, a Macedonian call, a call from across the city, across the state, where people are saying, God, send someone to rescue us. And I'm wondering if there today are men and women here who say, Pastor Ken, would you come join me up here, please? That you would say, I want to be an ambassador. Starting today, I will be an ambassador. I will be a disciple. If you're here, would you stand to your feet right now? Let me see who will say, God, I will go. I will be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you stand right now? God bless you. Anybody else? Stand quickly to your feet. Yes, yes, God bless you. See you all in the back. Yes. Anybody else? Keep standing. We're going to pray a prayer over you. Anybody else who says, I'm ready to be a witness. God bless you. Anybody else? I'm ready to go. We'll, I, I'll learn. I'll, I'll, I'll have God go with me and bless me. God bless you. Anybody else? Any young people who say, I'm ready to be an ambassador for Jesus. I'm ready to be a witness. Stand to your feet. Last chance. We want to include you in this prayer. Anybody else? Thank you, Pastor. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. God, that you not only save us, but you invite us into your work. God, there's no greater joy than to do the thing that you've designed us to do that you've given us power to do, that you've called us to do. Now, God, I know we're all nervous about failing and we're, we're all nervous about whether we feel like we know what to do, God, but I believe that in the heart of every believer, Lord, that you, you confirm your word, that we are purposed and called to share, just to say what the Lord did for us. And so, God, for every person that's stood up, for every person that's saying, yeah, I'll go. Father, we know we're not talking about going halfway around the world. We're just talking about going around the places that we always go around, but having a purpose in our hearts and our minds to tell people about the goodness that we found in you. And so, Lord, I pray your blessing upon these people, God, but don't let it stop there. 
God, help them to step up and step out, to get connected, to be trained how to do this. God, once you equip us and once you teach us what to do, there's no barrier. There's no snare. There's no wall that the enemy can build that you won't give us the power to knock down. No stronghold that's too big. Father, I pray, God, that for those people that I love that I'm not able to reach, God, I pray that you'll let one of these do it. Sometimes it's me, but sometimes it's not me. Sometimes it's someone else. And so, God, I pray whoever that is that they're not sitting on the sideline. I pray they're not hoping someone else will do it. I pray, God, that you'll teach us, God, that sometimes it's just us. Sometimes we're the lady that prays for the guy who gets in a car wreck. And so, God, give us courage, God. Teach us, lead us, guide us, make us bold and equip us, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you guys stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Look, hey, it is uh, always a pleasure to have the Vaughns with us. Uh, But as you know, they go and go and go. I don't know, maybe you don't know, but Peter is 11 weeks, 10 weeks, 11 weeks, uh, just coming off of uh, open heart quadruple bypass surgery. Um, And I'm going to tell you something. People say like, you know, I don't know if you've known, but pe- people that have that surgery, they're not normally 10 weeks up preaching it uh, for 40 minutes, right? They're usually not even up walking around very well. But I'll tell you this, when you have purpose, when you know what you're made for and you love what you do, you'll do whatever it takes. You'll eat whatever food they make you eat. You'll take whatever steps they tell you to take. You'll do everything so that you can go and do the thing that God wants you to do. And my prayer is, is I'll never lose sight of what God has me doing and that you'll never lose sight of what God has you doing. Because listen, those things will carry you to places that other things won't. Knowing that God has a reason for you to be here and living in that reason can change your entire life. So I pray that you continue to search that out. And if you don't know what it is, hey, uh, email us, text us something. I'll do whatever I can to help you find that one thing. Amen. Lord, I pray a blessing over you people, Father, that they would bear your name and that they would be ambassadors for you every single place they go. God, I pray, God, that they would run into people, that you speak to them and you say, look, it's you. You've got to tell them about me and give them the words to do it. Father, I pray, God, that as the bonds continue on, both in healing and in ministry, God, that your hand would always be upon them. God, that your protection would surround them and God, that you continue to give them the best years of their life, God, that they'll see you working through them each and every day. God, we thank you for all that they do. We bless them as a church, as a church family. In Jesus' name, everybody agree with me. Say amen. Amen. We love you guys. Make sure you greet the Vons on your way out. We will see you next week.